Okay, good morning traders and welcome to this live weekly strategy webinar. Today is Monday, February 14th and I'm Michael Boutros, technical strategist with Daily FX. Great to be with you guys this morning. Roland says good morning, sound and video is good. Gary, good morning to you. Generoso, dollar cad weekly low to weekly high. Thanks, you demand. <laughs> Generoso, we'll definitely take a look at that. Jack, good evening. Looking forward to your insightful webinar. It's always a pleasure to be here, and it's always a good way to start the week uh, with you guys. So, uh, good morning. Happy uh, Valentine's Day to all the ladies in the room. I uh, hope you guys had an awesome weekend. We had such an interesting week in price action. Obviously, the inflation numbers came in hotter than expected. You saw the dollar really take a dump, and then it really just rebounded right into the close. Um, we're still or I should say, I still think that the dollar recovery here may be a bit vulnerable. So even on this recovery, I don't want to get too excited about it, but we'll take a look at the levels. Hey, Manfred, great to see you as always. Uh, on the menu for today, guys, we'll start off as always with the DXY and take a look at where the index stands with the 10-year treasury, uh, also coming off a big level. Euro, gold, dollar CAD, SPX at Fibonacci support, oil, possible topside exhaustion, the British pound, you got employment data and UK inflation this week, Bitcoin, and uh, I already said oil. And that's what's on the menu from my end. Uh, I see Roland wants to take a look at dollar yen and dollar Swiss. Okay, see if we have that time for Roland. I got you on that. All right, any other questions or trade setups? As always, feel free to throw them on the message board at any time. Let's jump right in. Here's what DXY looks like, or here's what it looked like um, last month. This was into the close of January. Just want to show you a side-by-side -side comparison. You know, we noted that the pullback essentially halted at that October 2017 high that held support on a closed basis. We've seen a recovery off that level, but not much. Right into that median line, we're still kind of just dangling right there. So from the weekly standpoint, you know, resistance at 96.50 on the weekly chart into 96.65. Uh, support still at 95.15, you know what I mean? So you're right slap in the middle of the range. Um, on the intraday charts, looks a little bit more interesting. Here's what it looks like first on the daily and then on the intraday. So from the daily standpoint, massive reversal last month, right? Huge, huge reversal. Looked like we made a break of the monthly opening range to the upside. Came back into the start of this month, took it all back. And here's the recovery you've seen over the last week or so. 96.50, 96.56, 618 of the drop off last month's high, the 2020 yearly open, major pivot in price, right? That's resistance. 96.70 is your monthly open. That's the breakout territory. Anything above this, would risk resumption of the broader uptrend. That said, the immediate advance looks vulnerable into this spot. Okay, here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. So a closer look, this is the pitchfork off of the um, modified pitchfork off the low from January. Support, here's the median line converging. Again, on the 618 of the drop, 2020 yearly open, 96.50, 96.56, that's key resistance for the dollar. That's the breakout level that you need to mark resumption of the broader uptrend. All right, so maybe a little stronger, but generally looking for topside exhaustion here as you get in your 96.56 on the upside. Any questions on DXY? A quick look at US Treasuries. I've been getting a lot of questions on this. I just wanted to show you the daily charts, impeccable. These levels have been insane. The big lateral level of resistance we talked about for a couple of weeks was 91 into 94, 191 to 194 right here. We came into it into the start of the month, held there for two days. Here's the pop. And once we closed above, it's been just ping pong. Up into uptrend resistance, down into uptrend support. That's the pivot. Anything sub 191 on a daily closed basis would risk a larger setback in yields, a rally in price, right? So it kind of puts things in perspective when we're looking at the dollar recovery here. Still looks pretty good, but I do think that the near-term recovery is starting to get a little bit, 
little get a little bit vulnerable here. Um, so that's a quick look at DXY today. Here's number two, Euro dollar. And here's our last Euro dollar update here on Daily FX. This was published back on the 10th. I want to show you uh, first the weekly chart to kind of give you a picture of where we are on things. Here's Euro on the weekly. All right. So we talked about this last week. Rebounded off of long term slope resistance, turned support, break support, support, support. The rally we got two weeks ago broke downtrend resistance and failed right at this key level at the 2019 high day close. Look at that. Perfect resistance, perfect resistance, breach and accelerated rally, break, accelerated drop. It's exactly where we petered out last week. So you can envision a scenario where, again, 60% of the index on the DXY roughly is Euro, right? You can envision a scenario where Euro gets a little bit of a drawdown, dollar gets a little bit of a, of a rally since the start of the week. Key support for Euro is 112.64. It's the 618 of this year's rally thus far. All right, so that's from the weekly standpoint, okay? Looking from 1,000 feet up, obviously any implications that we see here, um, on a technical break, we need to see the close, right? Doesn't really mean much until we get that weekly close. Uh, that momentum trigger that we were looking at last week, we did close above. Again, we're still holding above that right now. Again, something to watch into the close of this week. Here's what Euro looks like on the daily chart. All right. And here, whoops, was our last Euro update. So the focus of this was that a near-term breakout was brewing. Euro is really holding a tight range right below resistance. That level was 114.45, the 2019 objective yearly open, while noting that we needed to break above 115, essentially to mark resumption of the broader uptrend. So the rally's at risk into this region. Fast forward a couple more days, we actually made a stretch all the way just shy of 115. Before pulling back, here's the drawdown. Okay, first level of support was at the median line. We've already ducked below that. Next level of support is going to be this 618. This is the yearly range. That's 112.64. We just looked at it on the weekly chart. That converges on uptrend support. So maybe a little bit lower. Here's Euro on the intraday. Okay, and here's what it looked like last week. So the major focus was again, this near term range that was taking shape just below key resistance into 115. You can see we made for another stab into 115. Here's the inflation data, turn around and move lower. Once we broke 113.83, you were looking for 113.44. Okay, we already got that. The new 38.2 for that new high is why it's up a couple of ticks there. Next level down is that 1260 level. 1264, same level we're looking at on the daily chart, same level we were looking at on the weekly chart. All right, so focus heading to the start of the week, start of the trade session, not a trade recommendation from Daily FX or IG, just my humble opinion. Risk is lower, sub 1350, looking for support into 1264. All right, um, that's sort of the game plan here for Euro looking for support, looking for a low early in the week. Now, major US data doesn't come till Wednesday. We get uh, US retail sales for the month of January. Uh, those are likely to be important. We also get the FOMC minutes released on Wednesday as well. So do keep that on your calendar for this week. All right, that is Euro. Any question on Euro? Number two, here's number three, gold. So are we at a breakout or not? Gold is at a critical inflection, okay? It's absolutely important at these levels. And here's what the gold chart looks like first on the weekly chart. This is where most of the threat comes. So I've showed you guys this chart for a couple of weeks, a couple of years I could say at this point, but a couple of weeks. And here is the weekly, the yearly open, okay? 
we opened up the year, ran right into the 2021 trend line resistance. We posted an outside weekly reversal candle off that level, slammed right into support. Where was support? 1791, 1796, I believe it was, was the 52 week moving average. It's exactly where we, called that, where we closed that outside reversal candle from, and that's the lows that we ran into, right? Here's the recovery and rebound. Last week, we closed above that trend line resistance. So is that a breakout? Is that a breakout? If it is, I would have wanted to see, or I want to see, an accelerated rally past this region. Here are those highs they made back late last year. This is back in this uh, September, November rally, right? Right up there. But you're looking for a pop, right? You're looking for a break of resistance. You want to see an accelerated run. So that's sort of the focus this week, right into the start of the week, is how does gold start to develop on this potential breakout? Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Same trend line. That's last year's trend line resistance, January of last year. Here's June of last year. Failure in November of last year. Failure in January of this year. Breakout. Breakout. Okay. First level is 1850. We made it through that. We closed above. Next level from here is slope. And a little bit higher is going to be that 1877 level where we topped out back in the November advance. So very, very clear. Okay. Key support at this point, near term bullish invalidation would be 1830. And of course, your monthly open is way down here. That's that's pointless to even look at at this point. You're constructed well above this level. That's key resistance. Okay, here's gold on the intraday charts. So I showed my, showed my guys this trade last, uh, last night. This is the pitchfork real near term. Okay, here's what the trade looked like, by the way, um, on our last update. We did Euro. Ah, here's gold. So this was on my analyst pick back on the 9th. I highlighted um, the resistance range at the 1825, 1830 level that was right right here, right? We we're looking for that climb towards 1850, constructive above the weekly open. Obviously, we got a new weekly open, but there's 1850. Okay, we ripped right through it and rallied right into the upper parallel. So we're coming off of these levels right here. Here's what it looks like now. A real near-term formation just off this January and February low has support, has support, had resistance. It was a messy, you know, it did break above, but not by much. So I'm thinking maybe you get exhaustion here. I'm thinking again, maybe you get exhaustion here. 1850 support, 1832, above 1830, where it's where our resistance level last week. That's now key support, bullish inval. Like I said, a break of the highs here, we're looking for 1877. All right, so the levels are super clear. You're heading into, let me zoom this out for you. Here's the 240. You're heading into uptrend resistance. Could get a pullback, constructive above 1830, topside breach targets 1877. Any questions on this gold setup? <clears throat> so we are testing uptrend resistance it is still in the constructive trade risk for some exhaustion ultimately don't want to see losses surpass anywhere near 1830 if this is heading higher all right that is number three all right number four so by the way no change to any of those levels from that gold update um, in fact, if you click on that link, um, I always have the link provided for you. Our last gold scalp update was right here, right before the breakout that we just made. So we're still targeting there. Levels are unchanged. We're trading above here. We're into the uptrend. All right. Uh, so that's gold. 
also from that analyst pick, we also talked about um, Dollar Cat, and here's what Dollar Cat looked like. This thing's kind of been really uh, frustrating because it, it just refuses to break out of that uh, that, out of that mode. What is this? High MB silver, please, if time permits. You know what? Before I move into Dollar Cat, here's a quick look at silver. I haven't been tracking it, Minaj. I don't really trade. I don't really. Um, I don't really actively trade this, but there's been a lot of questions on it. Here's what I have on the silver trade. Okay, not quite as clean as setup. Um, and what I don't like about this is that you're essentially mid-range for the yearly range for the January range. If this is a near-term breakout, okay, look for slope resistance, maybe a little bit higher, right next to the yearly high day close. That gives you 2446. But I just don't have a slope um, that I'm comfortable with on this. You know, I've tried a couple of different tacts. Uh, this was something I was working with for a while, but you didn't get extension to the 75% parallel. Could be a nice pivot here along the 25, but just not the cleanest setup, right? So take it for what it's worth, Minaj. Hope that helps. It's a near-term breakout, but wouldn't chase it. Watch 24.46, that's your sort of key level on the top side to mark a larger reversal in trend. Okay, thanks, May, you're more than welcome. All right, moving right along. Can you look at New York coffee, Ian? <laughs> Not sure what you mean by that. Um, but Dollar Cat, huge levels, huge levels. So here's what Looney looks like right now. Let me start off by the weekly chart. So from the weekly standpoint, um, it's been a boring trade, but it is really bumping up against a critical level of resistance. Our last uh, Looney weekly update highlighted this key region right here. Okay, this was published back on the 9th. 2769 into 2814. It's the it's last year's objective high week close it's the objective 618 of that december sell-off and you can see that the rally failed right there and for the last three weeks this level has capped the advance momentum right up uh, slightly above 50 really no help at all here right so long story short from a thousand feet up you're constructive above 25 28 the 52 week moving average again the lower parallel Key, resist, key resistance is right into this 128 handle, 2815. Top side breach there, you're looking for 130. Here's dollar CAD on the daily chart. The only thing that's super confident or at least <clears throat> interesting, excuse me, here is that the monthly opening range is extremely tidy. Here's your monthly open. You set a low, you set a high, you test the lows, the monthly range is set and you've been ping pong ever since. So support, objective yearly open, that's 2640. That's the monthly opening range lows. Objective resistance, 2767, that's the 618. That's last month's and this year's close high. And that's gonna be the opening range highs for the, for the month as well. So your whole focus on dollar CAD is a breakout of this critical zone. Okay, now look at this on a near-term chart. It's even worse, okay? Here's what the four hour looks like. I'll show you the two hour, not much. Here's the break and pivot back above the yearly open. Resistance, support, resistance, support, support, resistance, right? Now, you can, one could suggest that this is a contractionary sort of consolidation pattern and you're looking at the breakout at the end of the day a break and close above 2767 would do it my part looking for 2813 looking for 2850 and beyond um key support is really 2640 if we break below there you're basically risking a look you know or risking a, a, a run a rally back into the loony back towards uptrend support 
So typically a very exciting trade, typically a trade I can't wait to talk about, but for the last two weeks, guys, it's been a snooze fest. Okay, keep an eye on this one on Wednesday um, as well. We do get core inflation figures out of Canada. So retail sales in the US, core inflation at the same time on Wednesday could be the catalyst we need to get a break out of this consolidation. But for now, the focus is on an objective break of the monthly opening range. Any questions on Looney? It's number four. We're on breakout watch here. Hey, Iman, great to see you. Hey, Ty, uh, S&P and NASDAQ 100. You know what? S&P is up next, and man, what a morning. And we just started the morning. So guys, you might have noticed earlier in the morning, S the S&P was trading uh, much heavier on the session pre-market. Uh, and then some commentary came out from uh, the Ukraine situation that a Russian officials are starting to talk slow are looking more uh, productive right and all of a sudden you saw a rebound and people are saying that's why stocks rally i don't care right they can go with whatever story they want by my part stocks rebounded because they hit support okay very simple <laughs> i don't need some geopolitical event it came off of support and not just any support pretty critical fibonacci support so look uh before i get into it i just want to show you our last update on SPX, I actually included it on this uh, analyst pick that we published back on the 9th, but I had written about it earlier into the close of January. Okay, and here's what it looked like into the close of January on the daily chart. Just wanna show you how crazy clean these levels have been. Uh, before I even get into this, guys, the weekly charts for SPX looks like this. We talked about the fact that that break that we made back on the 17th, the week of the 17th, was the first major break of the original trend off that mid-2020 low. That's the first break of uptrend support. We tried to probe that 52-week moving average. It held, rebounded, failed at former slope support turned resistance and last week we made a reversal candle right off that the pullback guess what we're at once again the 52 week moving average stop traffic that's also the 618 of the rally so you can you can say it was the the ukraine or the russians you can say whatever the hell you want at the end of the day i saw us coming into support and that's it right? This is the weekly chart, guys. This is from like a thousand feet up. So you drill down even deeper, it was even cleaner. Again, here's what it looked like back on the 31st. We had just rebounded off of downtrend support. We highlighted topside targets at 45.21 and 45.91. That's your key resistance and bearish invalidation. Price action rallied into that once, pulled back, rallied into it again last week threatening a break of the downtrend quickly reversed and here we are plummeting into the 618 retracement again that's also the 52 week moving average you can't make this stuff up you look at it from an intraday standpoint here's what it'll look like on the recovery looking for a rally into those two regions, looking for possible exhaustion into 4592. Here's what it looks like now. Here's a 240. Okay, side by side. So, boom. We updated in the last analyst pick that, hey, that rally has now extended into the 618, pulled back, there was the 618 again and we warned watch that retracement we need to close above that to validate this break of the downtrend we rallied into that 618 pulled right back again right into that 382 right into the 618 okay so this is pretty key here's the uptrend right rallied right or, or broke down past 
that slope, dropped into the 618, and here's the recovery back again. I wanna see resistance right here, guys, into the US Open. I wanna see what happens. Ideally, 4430s holds resistance if we are heading lower. 4451 is now initial resistance on a technical standpoint. Bearish invalidation, what I told my guys yesterday, was Friday's high. If you break through Friday's high, we're looking for the breakout. But until we do, we just broke below support. If this breakdown has more to go, that should be resistance. And if that holds, guys, into the US trade session today, we're looking for 4197. That's the basic 236 that was missed on this last decline. Okay, that's the 236 of the entire 2020 rally. So the SPX levels have just been stellar, guys, absolutely stellar. Um, any questions? on the S&P 500. The biggest event risk for the week for the US is gonna be retail sales on Wednesday. Expecting a print of 4.8%, oh, excuse me, expecting a print of 1.8%, excuse me. That's from the previous read, guys, of negative 1.9, we got a contraction. So, should be an interesting print there on Wednesday. Hey, good morning, Sherry, always a pleasure. Ty, does that help? What? the objective level. Ty, ask, uh, ask me that question again. I don't know what you mean by that. What's the objective level? Bearish inval is last Friday's high. A break lower from here, you're looking for the median line, you're looking for that 236. MB, what's your take on US treasuries? The 10 year went to two, then came back to 1.9 and 1.98. So lots of volatility there. Sorry if you have covered it before. Uh, I joined, yeah, Minaj, I did. So I'll have this published. Um, I believe the published time is 12 noon today. But just a quick recap again, I went over this earlier. 10 years by my part just came off resistance. This is support. This is support. If it buckles back below 191, I think you get a larger washout. But we just, re we just responded to objective uptrend resistance. Wouldn't be too surprised. See a little bit of a pullback here. All right, Minaj, Ty, hope, hope that helps both. You're more than welcome, <laughs> more than welcome. All right, so SPX, plain and simple, we're at Fibonacci support, all right? Blame whatever you wanna blame for the reasoning, for the rebound, I have a set support. Um, oil, next up on tap, that was number five. Number six, here is the oil trade. So look, it's always a full errand trying to call a high, right? And we're not necessarily looking for the high, but I did want to note um, that we are at major resistance. So here's a chart that I published. Uh, again, this was right into the open of the month. And the level that we were looking for is essentially this uptrend and that the advance may be looking a little bit exhausted here, right? Here's oil now on the weekly chart. Okay, so what it was, this was the weekly chart, a little bit of an adjustment since then. Um, there's the 618, nope, it's the same chart. There's the 618, we popped through it, that's 9068, and we rallied right into the uptrend. So it's the same exact chart, guys. This was published again back on the second. So didn't get much of a pullback, but this rally extended through the 618, into uptrend resistance, and that's where we're struggling right now. Again, just for a disclaimer, y'all know in this room, I've talked about it repeatedly, I'm, uh, I've been very, very bullish on energy, generally speaking, because of the geopolitical environment, because of the domestic policy here in the US, because of a lot of reasons. Um, we're constructive oil. But even those strong fundamental backdrop biases, are gonna see interruptions. They're gonna see kickbacks. They're gonna see corrections. Now, if you're a really aggressive guy, you might be looking to play that correction on the way back. I think the more prudent um, sort of approach is be to look for the pullback to get back on the long side, if you feel need, but we're at uptrend resistance. I can't advocate buying right up here, all right? 
Momentum on the weekly charts has been marking divergence for over a year. Here's a higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, lower high, lower high, lower high, right? So you can't say that, oh, well, you know, we're, we're, we're coming back from oversold, so that's the signal. No, 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 no. You've been getting that signal for quite some time. But again, from where we are on a price standpoint, uptrend resistance, here's what it looks like on the daily charts. All right, much stronger divergence here, price action with a higher high, the oscillator with a lower high. It's a weak signal in that it's you know above 70. These signals don't tend to be too strong, but nonetheless, this holds more meaning. I put more emphasis on this when price is at resistance. And again, can't make this up guys. This is the daily chart, same slope we've been following since last year. Price resistance, 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 resistance. Is that another failure? Keep an eye on this this week. Bearish cipher harmonic US oil on the monthly chart uh, to 60 on US oil. Carol, um, I am not in that camp. <laughs> um, look, Carol, I definitely see the risk for a setback, which is kind of my point here today. Uh, 60 is an aggressive call. I think there's just too much fundamental backdrop behind this to see a, a sort of a collapse of that low. In any event, that's what makes a market. At the end of the day, near-term support, guys, is at the objective monthly open. That's 88.12. Near-term bullish invalidation is at the objective monthly opening range lows. The January 2010 swing high. And that's going to be right here to 87.14 into 88. That's key support and bullish invalidation. All right. Remember, a breach above here, guys. I mean, I got to go back to the weekly charts. There's really not much. You're looking for 100, period, plain and simple. But this is the last ditch resistance. Okay. Carol says, just an FYI on oil. <laughs> Cheers. Support on pullback of some type. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If it does materialize into a corrective move, which the technicals certainly suggest the risk is there, uh, we'd be looking for a larger pullback to get us a better, better support lower down. Absolutely. Is Twitter the only way to get your recordings? Because I haven't been successful with getting them. Hey, Dale, um, are you following the right... Twitter handle. My Twitter handle, guys, is MB4X. It's on all my reports at the very bottom. Um, and they're always going to be labeled technical price um, or technical trade setups, like right here. That's going to be a scalp. Another technical trade setups. Right here. That's going to be a scalp, right? Um, it publishes at, um, again, 12 o'clock today. It'll be on daily effects as well on the homepage. Hope that helps. Dale, just ping me if anything, I'll send you a link. Okay. Carol says, thank you. Ty says, do you put these on it? No, I don't put these on, nope. I'll attempt again, thanks. You're more than welcome. NASDAQ Dow Jones, the same slope. So I see a couple of questions for NASDAQ. Um, and Ty, you're asking for NASDAQ as well. Look, I haven't updated the chart, but here's what I'm looking at. This is the weekly, uh, here's the daily. Here's MDX, guys, on the daily chart. Very similar, not as clean, not as clean. Remember, SPX, textbook, textbook test and false break of the upper parallel. NDX didn't really quite get there right the 75 percent parallel seems to have governed the high um so it looks like we are pivoting back below that near-term support again here key support is a little bit closer than it is for spx so uh ndx 13,948, basically right below 14,000 is going to be that 618 that we rebounded off of that's the rebound off of last year's retracement so here's your 2021 open this is the retracement of the entire 2021 rally 
That's the 618 that caught the lows. That's still key support. Bearish inval on this one is right here at the monthly open. Okay, that's 14,966. That's going to be your bearish inval. That comes on slope in the next couple of days right there. All right. Does that help, guys, on NASDAQ? Okay, what's your view on British pound? Interesting you should ask, Kobus, because that's next on the list, my friend. Here's what uh, the British pound looks like. Look, you got major uh, core inflation data on tap on Wednesday. On Tuesday, tomorrow, you get uh, Canada, uh, excuse me, UK employment figures on tap. Here's the British pound looks like first on the weekly charts, then back to the daily. So the weekly chart had a sitting at the yearly open last week. I didn't touch this just because we've been straddling the weekly open, uh, the yearly open, excuse me, yearly opens at 3529 here for sterling. Uh, the only thing that you want to take note out here for the weekly chart, key levels, bearish invalidation, key resistance, 136.76. Near-term support, 33.91. Critical support and resumption of the broader, broader downtrend would have to be that 32.70 level. That's last year's open. That's a 618 of the decline off the 2018 drop, right? The median line is there over the next couple of weeks. That's key support. So from 1,000 feet up, you don't really have much of a clear, like crazy bias you want to jump into, right? You're not near resistance. You're not near support. You're right at the yearly open. So what do you do? So when you find a trade like this, or uh, well, I should speak personally, when I find a trade like this, uh, you know, I, I want to see it. I want to trade off of better levels, closer to resistance, closer to support, a major pivot in price, something. But this straddle of the yearly open, I don't like. I don't like. Here's what British pound looks like on the daily chart. The monthly opening range is well preserved. Here's your monthly open. You set a high. You don't quite come back to test the lows, but you've tested that high multiple times and failed. So again, you're looking at a range right below Fibonacci resistance at the 618 retracement. That's 136. Again, even daily momentum, just flatlining at 50. I mean, what the heck is that? Ideally, pistol to my head, Boutros, I'll blow your brains out. I'd love to see a little bit of a kickback, a pullback towards the monthly open, maybe that FIB support level there to, to get an exhaustion low to fade for the rally. But no signals just yet. Here's Sterling on the intraday chart. And again, this is the four hour. Here's the two hour we were looking at last week, right? Nothing. Very much like dollar cat, which is why I think both of these this week got to watch. Got to keep them both on breakout watch because I do think both of those clear the range this week. Just my humble opinion, guys, not a trade recommendation from Daily Effects or IG. Questions on the British pound? Okay, we covered gold, and I think that's everything um, from my end. Uh, I do want to take a moment and look over uh, Bitcoin because we are at a critical juncture there as well. Uh, and if you guys have any other questions or trade setups, feel free to throw them on the message board. But here's Bitcoin, okay? Uh, and by the way, Tesla also is at a major, major support if you are following stocks. 815 to 840 is a must hold uh, for the Tesla bulls. But in any event, here is Bitcoin, okay? So where do I start? Once we got that breakout here into the start of February, we, we discussed that this may have been, this is the breakout that suggests that we did put a more important low here last month, okay? Um, if you guys recall, into the close of last year, I was calling for, you know, support and purchases and I did get long from 41,000 uh which was a really good range right here. We broke lower, the 1618 slope support held. Here's the recovery. Now, this is where things get dicey. 
if the rally is legit, if the breakout is legit, losses should be governed by 39,570. Key resistance and the breakout would be 46,700 into 46,200. That's your breakout zone. All right, it's a 38.2 of the drop off the highs. It's down slope resistance. It's the 2020 objective yearly open. Not Mike Boutros's opinion, not Daily FX's opinion, fact. Okay, so that's your breakout zone. So the whole battle this week is gonna be between in this zone, bullish invalidation, now 39,570. Questions on Bitcoin? FOMC minutes uh, out this week. Do we expect volatility? Apollo, my humble opinion, I'm not expecting too much volatility. I mean, you never know, right? With the central bank nonsense, someone might just say, you know, uh, something stupid on, on the cuff or whatever. It might come up in the minutes. But I think we got a pretty clear indication from Powell last time. Remember, in the March update for our next interest rate decision, we're going to get quarterly updated projections as they pertain to growth inflation and employment we get those next month so we'll get a much more detailed look of where the fed sees the markets i don't personally think apollo that the fomc minutes this week will necessarily be a, be a big game player all right just my just my humble opinion um what about today's emergency fed meeting at 11 30 um we will see steve uh, i don't think those kind of things you can plan for volatility or plan a trade around it uh, but the levels are pretty clear. I know what I'm looking for. So that's something we'll we'll, uh, we'll definitely be focused on. Ty, let's look at Ethereum as well. Ty, here's what Ethereum looks like. I don't have quite, well, let me take a step back. Bitcoin on the intraday actually looks pretty clean, right? So here's the levels on the intraday. It's the same slope that we were following from last week, guys, tilted for the variance of that, of that sort of gradient. Uh, for Ethereum, right the intraday is not quite as clear but here's the daily chart if this is a breakout it's sure hell a messy breakout uh retracement off that low i believe puts the 618 just below yep so that's key support initial support bullish invalidation resistance oh, resistance breakout level 52 Oh, is that the 200 day moving average, I believe? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's sort of the levels I'd be looking at. I bet you're probably at like a 38.2 retracement right now. Yeah. <laughs> so you're sitting at 32. I don't, ideally, you don't get down there, but this is your bullish inbound. Breakout target. Okay. Javago says, sorry for the delay. I woke up late. I hope we record this session ASAP. I shall watch it with my morning coffee and bagel. <laughs> Ms. Javago, happy uh, Valentine's Day. And yes, it should be published. I believe the published time for them today, they said is 12. So keep an eye on that. Marchin, I'm not going to get into this two exotic pairs, uh, brother. I mean, you can look at that tomorrow um, on the Swiss crosses. What do you think about Aussie dollar? So Aussie, so here's the look at Aussie. Who was asking about that earlier? Um, I'm sorry if I missed your name, but someone was asking about, <clears throat> here is what Aussie looks like. First on the weekly charts, it's absolutely radical. Look, the only thing I was confident about over the last couple of weeks was Aussie support, okay? Aussie support, Aussie support, Aussie support. 1690, okay, into 7016. Last year's objective, or excuse me, the 2020 objective yearly open. The November objective range close from that same year. The objective lows from last year. This year's opening range low. All of it is right into the 70 handle. Right, a major pivot in price. Forget, don't take my word for it. Look to the left. It's also the yearly lows for 2018. It's also the opening range low for 2020, 2019. Right? I could go on and on and on and on and on. That was a critical support. Resistance, 
That's pretty simple. This year's open. That's 7270. So for anyone looking at Aussie, this is the world for Aussie right now. Okay. It's 70 into 7270. It's a 270 pip range of critical, critical importance. Here's what Aussie looks like on the daily chart. All right. And this is why for me, I'm kind of I got I got turned off. I got turned off by this. Look, we were following this beautiful pitchfork off the highs into this yearly open. Beautiful drop into the lower parallel. Got us bullish. Loved the recovery. Once we broke above 7180, it looked like a breakout. It looked like a breakout of downtrend resistance. It looked like a breakout above key Fibonacci resistance. That day quickly reversed and closed below. And if you look at this on a daily close basis, looks like we never even peaked. So ever since that one day, <laughs> I've been uh, I've been pissed off. I, I, I haven't really wanted to get involved here. So I'm kind of looking for uh, guidance on Aussie. Look, here's the intraday chart I was showing my guys last week. That rally failed, even where it failed pissed me off. 72.52. Uh, was two equal legs off the low. So even if this was just a corrective approach, I would have loved to see us drive into that level. We didn't. The reversal was pretty mean, pretty quick, pretty severe. And then into the open of the week, you know, what is this? Right? What is this? If this is a break of uptrend support, that should be resistance. We should be looking for a move lower. On the decline, Two. That's a 618 extension. Didn't even catch support. There's the 100. So, right off the bat, 70, 70, 70, 45, both levels of interest for possible downside exhaustion. So, here. And here, right? Obviously, we noted this is critical support for on a yearly standpoint. But boy, oh boy, I mean, if that break is legit, resistance should hold at 7140, 7050, and 7044. Excuse me, 7075 and 7045, both levels of interest on the downside. Questions on Aussie? Kiwi is very similar scenario, all right? So um, both of those kind of faking a break of uptrend support, but not really getting much MOMO on the downside. So on this one, obviously the weekly opening range high is 66.50. I'd love to see that hold. Monthly open is 65.75. Both of these, I think, more to be desired, more to be desired. Okay. Um, dollar yen for you, Roland, you're asking earlier in the session. We've got a couple of minutes left here. Here's what dollar yen looks like. I actually did write about this last night. I was looking about, look, dollar yen typically is a really good barometer for basically like what you're looking for dollar price action moving forward and risk, right? Is very also a yield sensitive pair. So as we look at treasury yields, essentially looking for that possible like recovery or rebound, Here's dollar yen. This is the weekly chart. Um, the 8, 2015 August swing low, believe it or not, has been a level we've been watching for a while. That was 116. That's still resistance. We pivoted back and forth along this key zone since the start of the year. So, man, I'm kind of neutral on this one. All right, Roland, I'm not really a big fan of of where this stands at this point. Okay. Uh, here's dollar yen on the, on the, on the daily chart, a little bit easier to recognize here. The high day closes resistance at 1613. Again, that August, 2015 swing low is just below that at 1608. Um, here's the yearly open failed into that level. Didn't really, you know, didn't really come off uptrend support. Here's the rally again here failing. So what do you want to do with something like this? If the weekly chart's not clear and the daily chart's not clear, 
You know, if you put a pistol to my head, maybe a short, but there's there's nothing here for me. There's nothing here for me. Here's the intraday chart, okay? Let me get you the four hours to give you a little bit more clearance. This is the pitchfork we've been following. It's been pretty darn clear as far as resistance and support, but like, what is this? This is key resistance here. All things held constant, I'd be looking to buy off one of these levels, but we'd need that drive down first. And at the end of the day, 116 pop is what we need to mark resumption. You're looking at like slope comes in near 116.50s, but then you're looking at 17 and change on the upside. So maybe a deeper setback that would kind of jive with a little dollar weakness, okay? Um, but then I would look for a little bit more of a re resetting to reaffirm that, that support. Suzanne, a lengthy question here. I have a question on your use of FIB levels. At what point do you draw them new and or old ones get invalidated? Sit, is it that is it that stronger the move on which they are drawn, the longer they can be said to be valid? I hope your question, I hope my question makes sense to you. Suzanne, um, maybe elaborate. Would you think that a FIB levels drawn on the March 2020 drop is still valid? So Suzanne, right off the bat, before I even look at what you're talking about, I would tell you that FIBs, they're very simple. If you're using a retracement, as long as you're within the range of the high-low, technically it is still valid. What I like to do, though, is once you've made another pop and you have a confirmed high or you have a near-term reversal, go ahead and add a new retracement for that new move. Um, the other thing I would say is on a move like this, for example, let's say I was looking at this retracement, right? This came into the 618, it held and rebounded. Once this high broke, this retracement's null and void. Now you gotta stretch it to the new retracement, right? This pitchfork is the pitchfork of one, two, three, or excuse me, this, this uh, extension. That was this, the 1618 extension of, it was more like this to be, to be exact, right? Same levels, one, two, three, one, two, three. We dropped into that level. We haven't broken it, so on the second approach, that still holds. But now that we've broken through this high, this extension technically now is useless, right? Does that make sense, Susan or Suzanne? I hope I'm. I hope that offers some clarity. Um, yes, it does. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Good. Dollar yen also higher and lower on the uh, or excuse me, a higher high and a lower high on the oscillator. Um, what time frame are you looking at, Sandra, with that question on dollar yen? I don't have the divergence just yet on the weekly. Yes, on the weekly, yes, but this has been going on the weekly. And that's the thing with weekly divergence, Suzanne, or Sandra, excuse me. It's the same thing that we were looking at in oil, right? You can have weekly divergence for years before you materialize into a necessary turn per se. Uh, but guys, I gotta wrap it up there. Uh, we got another webinar on the clock with my good friend and colleague, Mr. Christopher Vecchio. We'll be taking the wires at 9.30. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Keep your eyes out for that inflation data. That's pretty gonna be pretty important uh, as far as core inflation from the UK and core inflation from Canada. Retail sales will be the big hitter on Wednesday for the US. Best of luck trading, guys, and I'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. Cheers.